HarperCollins and Harper Audio present Warriors Super Edition Firestar's Quest by Aaron Hunter Performed by McLeod Andrews Prologue The full moon floated in the sky, shedding its cold light over the forest. A faint breeze murmured through the leaves of four massive oak trees. Dappled light and shadow moved over the pelts of many cats as they slipped into the hollow below. A muscular, bracken-colored tomcat emerged from the bushes that lined the sides of the hollow. He bounded across the clearing and leaped to the top of the great rock that stood in the center. Three other cats were waiting there. One of them, a she-cat with a brown tabby pelt, dipped her head in greeting. Welcome, Red Star, she meowed. How's the prey running in ThunderClan? We've plenty, thank you, Birdstar, the ThunderClan leader replied. Is all well in RiverClan? Before Birdstar could reply, one of the other leaders interrupted, scraping his claws on the harsh surface of the rock. His gray-black pelt was a shadow in the moonlight. It's time this gathering started, he rasped. We're wasting time. We can't start yet, Swift Star the fourth cat mewed. Her creamy brown pelt held the frosty shimmer of starlight. We're not all here. Swift Star let out an impatient snort. Wind Clan have better things to do than sit about waiting for cats who can't be bothered to come at the proper time. Look, Red Star pointed with his tail toward the top of the hollow. The shape of a cat was outlined against the pale moonlight. He stood motionless for a heartbeat then waved his tail and vanished into the bushes. More cats followed him, pouring over the rim of the hollow, the branches rustling as they streamed down the slope. There, Dawnstar mewed. Sky Clan are here at last. About time, too, Swift Star muttered. Cloud Star, he called as the first cat emerged into the clearing. What kept you? The Sky Clan leader was small for a tomcat with a lithe body and a neat, well-shaped head. His fur was pale gray with white patches like clouds. He didn't reply to Swift Star's question, but thrust his way through the cats until he reached the rock and sprang up to join the other leaders. Behind him, more and more cats were emerging from the bushes. A group of young apprentices ventured out, bunched together, their eyes wide with a mixture of fear and excitement. They were followed by the clan's elders, some of them limping, one leaning heavily on the shoulder of a warrior. Two she-cats each carried a tiny kit in her jaws. Several older kits stumbled wearily beside them. The remaining warriors circled them protectively. Great Star Clan, Swift Star exclaimed. Cloud Star, any cat would think you'd brought your whole clan to the gathering. Cloud Star steadily met the Wind Clan leader's puzzled gaze. Yes, he mewed. I have. Why in the name of Star Clan did you do that? Birch Star asked. Because we can no longer live in our territory, the Sky Clan leader told her. Two legs have destroyed it. What? Red Star stepped forward. My patrols have reported more two legs in your territory and noise from monsters, but they can't possibly have destroyed it all. They have. Cloudstar stared across the clearing, as if he were seeing something else in place of the moon-washed bushes. They came with huge monsters that pushed over our trees and churned up the earth. All our prey is dead or frightened off. The monsters are crouched around our camp now, waiting to pounce. SkyClan's home has gone. Turning to the other leaders, he went on. I have brought my clan here to ask your help. You must give us some of your territories. Yowls of protest rose from the cats below the rock. At the edge of the clearing, the Sky Clan cats huddled together with the strongest warriors on the outside, as if they were braced for an attack. Swift Star was the first to reply. You can't just walk in here and ask for our territory. We can barely feed our own clans as it is. Red Star shifted his paws uneasily. The prey is running well now in Greenleaf, but what's going to happen when Leaffall comes? ThunderClan won't be able to spare any then. Nor will ShadowClan, 
Dawn star meowed, rising from her place on the edge of the rock and facing Cloud Star with a challenge in her green eyes. My clan is bigger than any other. We need every paw step of ground to feed our own cats. Cloud Star's gaze flicked to the only leader who hadn't spoken. Bird Star, what do you think? I'd like to help, the River Clan leader mewed. I really would. But the river is very low, and it's harder than ever to catch enough fish. Besides, Sky Clan cats don't know how to fish. Exactly, Swift Star added. And only Wind Clan cats are fast enough to catch rabbits and birds on the moors. There's certainly nowhere in our territory where you could make a camp. You'd soon get tired of sleeping under gorse bushes. Then what is my clan supposed to do? Cloud Star mewed quietly. Silence spread over the clearing as if every cat were holding its breath. Red Star broke it with a single word. Leave. That's right. There was a hint of a snarl in Swift Star's meow. Leave the forest and find yourselves another place, far enough away that you can't steal our prey. A young black and silver she-cat rose to her paws in the clearing below. Swift Star, she called. As your medicine cat, I can tell you that Star Clan won't be pleased if the rest of us drive out Sky Clan. There have always been five clans in the forest. Swift Star looked down at his medicine cat. You say you know the will of Star Clan, Larkwing, but can you tell me why the moon is still shining? If Star Clan didn't agree that Sky Clan should leave the forest, they would send clouds to cover the sky. Larkwing shook her head, unable to answer her leader's question. Cloud Star's eyes stretched wide with disbelief. Five clans have lived in this forest for longer than any cat can remember. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Things change, Red Star replied. Is it possible that the will of Star Clan has changed also? Star Clan gave each clan the skills they need to survive in their own territory. River Clan cats swim well. Thunder Clan are good at stalking prey in the undergrowth. Sky Clan cats can leap into trees because there's not much cover in their territory. Doesn't this mean that each clan couldn't live in another clan's territory? A thin tomcat with rumpled black fur rose from where he sat at the base of the Great Rock. You keep saying that Star Clan wants five clans in the forest, but are you sure that's true? There are four oaks here at Four Trees. That could be a sign that there should be only four clans. Sky Clan don't belong here, hissed a silver tabby beside him. Let's drive them out now. The Sky Clan warriors bristled as one, unsheathing long, curved claws. Stop! Cloud Star called. Warriors of Sky Clan, we are not cowards, but this is a battle we cannot win. We have seen tonight what the warrior code is worth. From now on, we will be alone, and we will depend on no cat but ourselves. He leaped down from the great rock and shouldered a path through his warriors until he came face to face with a beautiful light brown tabby. Two tiny kits were mewling pitifully at her paws. Cloudstar, the she-cat's voice was a murmur of distress. Our kits are too small to make a long journey. I'll stay here with them, if any clan will have us. Kestrel Wing, the ThunderClan medicine cat, pushed his way between two SkyClan warriors, ignoring their snarls and bent his head to sniff the kits. You will all be welcome in ThunderClan. Are you sure? Cloudstar challenged him. After what your leader said to us today? I believe my leader was wrong, Kestrelwing meowed. But he won't condemn helpless kits to die. They will have a future in ThunderClan, and so will you, Birdflight. The light brown cat dipped her head. Thank you. She turned to Cloud Star, sorrow brimming in her amber eyes. Then this is goodbye. Bird flight, no. The Sky Clan leader looked horrified. How can I leave you? You must. Bird flight's voice quavered. Our clan needs you, but our kids need me just now. 
Cloudstar bowed his head. I'll wait for you, he whispered. I'll wait for you forever. He pressed his muzzle against Birdflight's side. Stay with Kestrel Wing. You'll find warriors to help carry the kids back to ThunderClan's camp. To the ThunderClan medicine cat, he added, take care of them. Kestrel Wing nodded, of course. With a last anguished look at his mate, Cloudstar signaled with his tail to the rest of his clan. Follow me. He led the way toward the slope, but before he could plunge into the bushes, Red Star called from the top of the great rock. May Star Clan go with you. Cloudstar turned and fixed a cold gaze on the cat he had once called friend. Star Clan may go where they please, he hissed. They have betrayed Sky Clan. From this day on, I will have nothing more to do with our warrior ancestors. He ignored the gasps of shock around him, some from his own clan. Star Clan allowed the two legs to destroy our home. They look down on us now and let the moon go on shining while you drive us out. They said there would always be five clans in the forest, but they lied. Sky Clan will never look to the stars again. With the last flick of his tail, he vanished into the bushes, and the rest of his clan followed. Chapter One Firestar slid around the edge of a hazel thicket and paused to taste the air. The moon was nearly full, and he could see that he was close to where the stream followed the border with Shadow Clan. He could hear its faint gurgling and picked up traces of the Shadow Clan scent markers. The flame colored tomcat allowed himself a soft purr of satisfaction. He had been leader of Thunder Clan for three seasons, and he felt as if he knew every tree, every bramble bush, every tiny path left by mice and voles throughout his territory. Since the fearsome battle when the forest clans had joined together to drive out Blood Clan and their murderous leader, Scourge, there had been peace, and the long days of New Leaf and Green Leaf had brought plentiful prey. But Firestar knew that somewhere in the tranquil night, an attacker was lurking. He made himself concentrate, all his senses alert. He caught the scent of mouse and rabbit, the green scent of grass and leaves, and very faintly the reek of the distant thunderpath. But there was something else, something he couldn't identify. He raised his head, drawing the breeze over his scent glands. At the same instant, a clump of bracken waved wildly, and a dark shape erupted from the middle of the curling fronds. Startled, Firestar spun to face it, but before he could raise his paws to defend himself, the shape landed heavily on his shoulders, knocking him to the ground. Summoning all his strength, Firestar rolled onto his back and brought up his hind paws to thrust his attacker away. Above him, he could make out broad, muscular shoulders, a massive head with dark tabby markings, the glint of amber eyes. Firestar gritted his teeth and battered even harder with his hind paws. A forepaw lashed out toward him, and he flinched, waiting for the strike. Suddenly, the weight that pinned him down vanished as the tabby cat sprang away with a yowl of triumph. You didn't know I was there, did you? He meowed. Go on, Firestar, admit it. You had no idea. Firestar staggered to his paws, shaking grass seeds and scraps of moss from his pelt. Bramble paw, you great lump! You've squashed me as flat as a leaf. I know, Bramblepaw's eyes gleamed. If you'd really been a Shadow Clan invader, you'd be crow food by now. So I would, Firestar touched his apprentice on the shoulder with the tip of his tail. You did very well, especially disguising your scent like that. I rolled in a clump of damp ferns as soon as I left camp, Bramblepaw explained. He suddenly looked anxious. Was. My assessment okay, Firestar? Firestar hesitated, struggling to push away the memory of Bramblepaw's bloodthirsty father, Tigerstar. When he looked at the young apprentice, it was too easy to recall the same broad shoulders, dark tabby fur, and amber eyes that belonged to the cat 
who had been ready to murder and betray his own clanmates to make himself leader. Firestar? Bramble Paul prompted. Firestar shook off the clinging cobwebs of the past. Yes, Bramble Paul, of course. No cat could have done better. Thanks, Firestar! Bramble Paul's amber eyes shone, and his tail went straight up in the air. As they turned toward the Thunder Clan camp, he glanced back at the Shadow Clan border. Do you think Tawny Paw will be near the end of her apprentice training too? Bramble Paw's sister, Tawny Paw, had been born in Thunder Clan, but she had never felt at home there. She was too sensitive to the mistrust of cats who couldn't forget that she was Tiger Star's daughter. When her father had become leader of Shadow Clan, she had left Thunder Clan to be with him. Firestar always felt that he had failed her, and he knew how much Bramble Paw missed her. I don't know how they do these things in Shadow Clan, he meowed carefully. But Tawny Paw started her training at the same time as you, so she should be ready for her warrior ceremony by now. I hope so, Bramble Paw mewed. I know she'll be a great warrior. You both will, Firestar told him. On the way back to camp, Firestar felt as if every shadowy hollow, every clump of fern or bramble thicket could be hiding the gleam of amber eyes. Whatever Tiger Star's crimes, he had been proud of his son and daughter, and his death had been particularly dreadful, with all nine lives ripped away at once by Scourge's sharpened claws. Was the massive Tabby watching them now? Not from Star Clan, for Firestar had never seen him in his dreams. The Thunder Clan medicine cat, Cinderpelt, had never reported meeting him when she shared tongues with Star Clan either. Could there be another place for cold-hearted cats who had been ready to use the warrior code for their own dark ambitions? If there was such a shadowed path, Firestar hoped he would never have to walk it, nor his lively apprentice. Bramble Paul was bouncing through the grass beside him, excited as a kit. Surely he had shaken off the legacy of his father. As they slipped down the ravine toward the camp, Bramble Paul halted, his gaze serious. Was my assessment really okay? Am I good enough to be a warrior? Firestar guessed. Yes, you are. We'll hold your ceremony tomorrow. Bramblepaw dipped his head respectfully. Thank you, Firestar, he mewed. I won't let you down. His eyes blazed. He gave a sudden bound into the air and pelted down the rest of the ravine to wait by the entrance to the gorse tunnel. Firestar watched him, amused. He could still remember when he had felt as if he had too much energy to contain in his four paws, when he felt as if he could run through the forest forever. You'd better get some sleep, he warned as he joined his apprentice. You'll have to sit vigil tomorrow night. If you're sure, Firestar, Bramblepaw hesitated, working his claws on the sandy ground. I could find you some fresh kill first. No, go on, his leader told him. You're so excited right now you wouldn't notice if a fox ate you. Bramblepaw waved his tail and bundled through the gorse tunnel into the camp. Firestar lingered outside the camp for a while, settling down on a flat rock with his tail curled around his paws. He could hear nothing but the faint rustle of leaves in the breeze and the tiny scufflings of prey in the undergrowth. The battle with Blood Clan had cast its shadow over all the clans. For more than a season after, every cat in the forest jumped at a cracking twig and chased out strangers as if their lives depended on it. They were even scared of going too close to Two Leg Place in case any surviving members of Blood Clan happened to be lurking there. But now, five moons later, Thunder Clan was thriving. Tomorrow, there would be a new warrior, and the apprentices Rain Paw, Soot Paw, and Sorrel Paw were all doing well after three moons of training. In time, they would be good warriors too. They were bound to be, considering who their father was. Every day they reminded Firestar of his first deputy, Whitestorm, who had died battling the vicious Blood Clan deputy, Bone. He still grieved for the old white warrior. His mind wrapped in memories of his old friend. It was a moment before Firestar realized he could hear a faint sound, 
the footfalls of a cat stepping lightly through the undergrowth. He sprang to his paws, looking around, but he saw nothing. He hardly had time to sit down before the noise came again. This time, Firestar whipped his head around in time to glimpse the pale shape of a cat standing a little farther up the ravine. Am I dreaming? Has Whitestorm left Starclan to come and visit me? But this cat was smaller than Whitestorm, and its fur was gray, patched with white. It stared straight at him, its eyes dark and earnest, as if it were trying to tell him something. Firestar had never seen it before. Could it be a rogue? Or worse, could Blood Clan have recovered from their defeat and come back to invade the forest? He sprang to his paws and raced up the ravine toward the strange cat. But as soon as he began to move, it vanished. And when he searched among the rocks, he couldn't find it. There weren't even any paw marks. But when he tasted the air, there was a faint trace of an unfamiliar scent almost swamped by the ThunderClan scents that came from the camp. Slowly, Firestar retraced his paw steps and sat on the rock again. All his senses were alert now as he gazed into the shadows. But he saw nothing more of the strange gray cat. Chapter Two While he still waited to see if the cat would return, clouds massed above Firestar's head blotting out the stars. Huge raindrops pattered on the rocks of the ravine, quickly growing to a steady downpour. Firestar squeezed through the gorse tunnel into the camp and raced across the clearing to his den at the foot of the high rock. Beyond the curtain of lichen, the den was dry. An apprentice had changed his bedding, piling fresh moss and bracken into a soft heap. Firestar shook the rain from his pelt and curled up, wrapping his tail over his nose. Rain drumming on the earth outside his den soon lulled him into sleep. The noise of the rain faded, and Firestar opened his eyes, feeling cold to the bone. His cozy nest had vanished, along with the familiar sense of ThunderClan. He was surrounded by dense, clinging mist. It swirled around him, breaking up now and then to show stretches of desolate moorland, he could feel tough, springy grass beneath his paws. At first, he thought he must be on Wind Clan territory. Then he realized that he had never seen this place before. Spotted Leaf, he called into the mist. Are you here? Does Star Clan have a message for me? But there was no sign of the beautiful tortoise shell who had once been Thunder Clan's medicine cat. She often visited Firestar in dreams, but now he couldn't pick up even a trace of her sweet scent. Instead, he heard the faintest sound, so distant that he couldn't make it out. He strained to listen, and an icy chill froze him from ears to tail as he heard a savage, wordless wailing, the dreadful sound of many terrified cats. He stiffened, ready to flee with them, but though the shrieks grew louder, all he could see were blurred shapes. They seemed to advance toward him through the mist, only to vanish before he could see them properly. The scent of unfamiliar cats drifted in the air. Who are you? he called. What do you want? But there was no reply, and soon the shrill wailing faded into silence. Firestar jumped as something prodded his side, Blinking awake, he saw warm yellow sunlight angling through the entrance of his den, shining on the pale ginger fur of his mate, Sandstorm. Are you okay? she asked. You were twitching in your sleep. Firestar let out a groan as he sat up. His muscles felt as stiff as if he had really been trekking over that barren moorland. It was just a dream, he muttered. I'll be fine. Look! I brought you some fresh kill, she pushed the limp body of a vole toward him. I just got back from a hunting patrol. Thanks. The vole must have been freshly caught. Its warm scent made his mouth water, and his belly felt hollow with hunger. Bending his head, he devoured the prey in a few rapid bites. Better now? Sandstorm inquired with a glint of mischief in her green eyes. That'll teach you to let young cats jump all over you. Firestar flicked her ear with the tip of his tail. 
Word of Bramblepaw's successful assessment had obviously spread through the camp. Hey, I'm not an elder yet, you know. The damp shadows of his dream were melting away in the bright sunlight. He stepped out of his nest and gave himself a quick grooming. Do you know if all the patrols are back yet? The last ones just came in. A shadow fell across the entrance of the den, and Firestar looked up to see his deputy, Graystripe, standing just outside. The hunting patrols caught so much prey, Thornclaw has taken the apprentices out to collect it. Why, did you want them? Not right away, but I need to know what they reported, Firestar replied. He beckoned the gray warrior inside with his tail. Remembering the unfamiliar cat he had seen in the ravine the night before, he asked warily, did any of them see any sign of rogues in our territory? Graystripe shook his head. Not a trace. Everything's peaceful out there. His yellow eyes narrowed with concern. Firestar, is something bothering you? Firestar hesitated. His old friend knew him well enough to tell when something was on his mind. But he didn't think this was the time to share his dream or the vision of the cat in the ravine. He had so little to go on. His solitary brooding on Tiger Star and White Storm could have made him see things in the shadows. No, I'm fine, he replied, pushing the strange gray cat to the back of his mind. Bramblepaw did an amazing assessment last night. He jumped on me by the Shadow Clan border. Come on, he meowed to Gray Stripe and Sandstorm. I want to hold his warrior ceremony as soon as the apprentices get back. He led the way out of his den and leaped onto the high rock. The rain had stopped. Above the trees, the sky was blue with scudding white clouds. Sunlight reflected from puddles, dazzling his eyes, and the barrier of thorns around the camp sparkled with raindrops. Thornclaw was emerging from the gorse tunnel with his apprentice, Sootpaw, behind him, both cats laden with fresh kill. Moments later, Cloudtail appeared with Rainpaw and Sorrelpaw. Firestar let out a yowl. Let all cats old enough to catch their own prey gather here beneath the high rock for a clan meeting. Pride surged through him as he watched his clan collect below the rock. The three youngest apprentices dashed over from the fresh kill pile to sit near the base of the high rock. They chattered excitedly, maybe imagining what it would be like when they became warriors too. Speckletail led the other elders from their den beside the burned out shell of the fallen tree. Cinderpelt, the medicine cat, appeared from the fern tunnel that led to her den and limped across to sit beside Brackenfur, Willowpelt, and Mousefur. Firestar spotted Brightheart emerging from the nursery. As an apprentice, she had been injured by a pack of dogs, leaving one side of her face torn away. Now, with her belly swollen with the kits she would bear soon, Firestar thought she had never looked happier. She padded slowly across the clearing to join her mate, Cloudtail, near the fresh kill pile. The white warrior touched her ear affectionately with his nose. Behind her came Fern Cloud with her two kits, who dashed off with squeals of excitement toward the nearest puddle. Shrew Kit, Spider Kit, come back at once! Fern Cloud scolded them. The two kits sat down at the edge of the water, but they kept shooting glances at their mother and dabbing the surface with an outstretched paw. Firestar watched, amused, as their father, Dustpelt, padded over to them, said something sternly to them, then went to sit by Fern Cloud. Barely a heartbeat passed before a tiny paw flashed out again. Spider Kid, Dustpelt called, loud enough for Firestar to hear him. What did I just tell you? Both kits glanced at their father and then went scampering off, tiny tails stuck high in the air. Soon, Shrew Kit found a ball of sodden moss lying on the ground. Hooking it up with one paw, he tossed it at his brother. Spider Kit ducked, and the moss sailed over his head and struck Speckletail right in the chest. The tabby elder sprang to her paws, batting its soaking chest fur with one paw and letting out a furious hiss. Though Speckletail could be cranky, Firestar knew she would never harm a kit. But Spider Kit and Shrew Kit weren't sure of that. They flattened themselves to the ground and crept backward to sit beside their mother and father. Firestar had missed the moment when Bramblepaw emerged from the apprentice's den. Now he was approaching the base of the rock. 
As Firestar was his mentor, he was escorted to his warrior ceremony by Graystripe, the clan deputy, instead. His brown tabby pelt was groomed to shining sleekness, and his amber eyes looked solemnly up at his leader. Firestar leaped down from the high rock to meet him. Close to him, he could see that Bramblepaw's serious expression hid in almost unbearable excitement. He realized how much this ceremony meant to his apprentice. Had Bramblepaw sometimes doubted that he would ever be accepted into ThunderClan as a full warrior? Firestar summoned up the words that had been spoken to every apprentice in the forest for season upon season. I, Firestar, leader of ThunderClan, call upon my warrior ancestors to look down on this apprentice. He has trained hard to understand the ways of your noble code, and I commend him to you as a warrior in his turn. Meeting Bramblepaw's gaze, he went on. Bramblepaw, do you promise to uphold the warrior code and to protect and defend this clan, even at the cost of your life? I do. No cat could doubt how much Bramblepaw meant it. Then by the powers of Star Clan, Firestar continued, I give you your warrior name. Bramblepaw, from this moment you will be known as Brambleclaw. Star Clan honors your courage and your loyalty, and we welcome you as a full warrior of Thunder Clan. Brambleclaw's eyes widened as Firestar spoke of his loyalty, and Firestar felt his fur prickle with the weight of meaning behind that word. He had never doubted Brambleclaw's commitment to the warrior code, but he had often struggled to trust the son of Tiger Star. He could see a few of the other cats murmuring to one another as if they too understood why he had chosen to mention loyalty in Brambleclaw's warrior ceremony. Taking a pace closer, Firestar rested his muzzle on the top of Brambleclaw's head. He could feel shivers running all through the new warrior's body. Brambleclaw licked Firestar's shoulder in response, then stepped back, his eyes glowing. Brambleclaw! Brambleclaw! His clanmates greeted him with his new name. In spite of being Tigerstar's son, he was popular in the clan, and most cats were pleased that he had become a warrior at last. Firestar took a couple of paces back, his gaze drifting to the puddle a couple of tail lengths away where Shrewkit and Spiderkit had been playing. The surface had stilled since they dabbed at it, and now it was a shining silver disc on the ground. It was reflecting an odd-shaped cloud. Firestar blinked. That was not a cloud. It was a cat's face, a pale gray cat with white patches on its fur and huge water-colored eyes staring straight at him. A wisp of the same unfamiliar scent that he had detected in the ravine drifted around him. Who are you? Firestar whispered. What do you want? There was a high-pitched shriek of excitement as Shrewkit launched himself into the air and landed in the middle of the puddle splashing every cat within reach and shattering the reflection into tiny fragments. Firestar looked up. The sky above the ravine was blue and cloudless. He glanced around, half embarrassed, hoping that none of his clanmates had seen him talking to a puddle. But as he watched the cats who were still crowding around Brambleclaw, he couldn't get the gray cat's face out of his mind. Firestar led the evening patrol as far as Tall Pines and Two Leg Place, still wary of possible trouble from Blood Clan on that side of the territory. Night had fallen by the time he and his clanmates returned. As he emerged into the camp from the gorse tunnel, he found Brambleclaw sitting alone in the middle of the clearing. You must be tired out, Sandstorm murmured sympathetically. He was out late with you last night doing his assessment and he hunted with Ashfur and Graystripe all afternoon. He'll be fine, Firestar replied. All new warriors sit vigil the first night. So the rest of us can get a good night's sleep, Cloudtail, the other member of the patrol, stretched and yawned. Leaving his mate and his kin to head for the fresh kill pile, Firestar strode out into the clearing toward Brambleclaw. Everything okay? he asked. Brambleclaw nodded. According to tradition, a new warrior had to keep his vigil in silence. He was obviously bursting with pride and taking his new responsibilities very seriously. Good, 
mewed Firestar. Don't hesitate to fetch me if there's trouble. Brambleclaw nodded again and fixed his gaze on the entrance to the thorn tunnel. Firestar left him there and returned to his den. He curled up in his nest, but the moment he closed his eyes, he found himself back on the mist-covered moorland, with the wails of cats shivering in his ears. No. He could not spend another night listening helplessly to their terror. Struggling back to wakefulness, Firestar stumbled out into the clearing again. Brambleclaw still sat in solitary vigil, while Sandstorm was heading across the clearing toward the warrior's den. As soon as she spotted Firestar, she veered aside to join him. Is anything the matter? She asked. Can't you sleep? I feel restless, that's all, Firestar replied, reluctant to tell even Sandstorm about the dream. I'm going for a walk. Suddenly longing for the warmth of her company, he added, do you want to come with me? He was sure his desperation must have shown in his eyes. But Sandstorm just nodded. She crossed the camp beside him and followed him out through the gorse tunnel. Without consciously deciding, Firestar turned his paws towards Sunning Rocks, the tumble of smooth gray boulders beside the river that divided ThunderClan territory from RiverClan. They climbed one of the rocks and sat side by side, watching the water whisper past dappled with starlight. After a moment, Sandstorm broke the silence. Are you worried about Brambleclaw? About whether you were right to make him a warrior? Her question surprised Firestar. Did his clanmates think he still distrusted Brambleclaw because of who his father was? The surprise was followed by a sense of guilt that they were so close to being right. No, he answered, trying to make his voice firm. Brambleclaw is not the same cat as his father. To his relief, Sandstorm didn't push him to tell her what was really on his mind. She just leaned her head on his shoulder. Her scent wreathed around him as they gazed together at the river of reflected starlight. Firestar knew that her touch should have comforted him, but he couldn't get the wailing of terrified cats out of his head or forget the reflection he had seen in the puddle. He stared down at the river, at the ruffled water spilling around half-covered rocks. No, they weren't rocks, he realized, his pelt bristling with fear. They were cats, desperately swimming cats, churning the water with their paws, their drenched bodies dragged by the swirling current. He blinked, and the vision was gone. All he could see was the river sliding past on its endless journey with the shivering starlight trapped in its depths. Great Star Clan, he thought. What's happening to me? Chapter Three Though Firestar didn't dream again that night, he slept badly, and he still felt tired when he emerged from his den the next morning. He blinked in the strong sunlight to see Ashfur padding across the clearing toward Brambleclaw. Your vigil's over, Firestar heard him meow. Come on, I'll find you somewhere to sleep. They disappeared into the warrior's den while Firestar crossed the clearing and slipped down the fern tunnel that led to Cinderpelt's den. The gray furred medicine cat was sitting outside the cleft in the rock, turning over some herbs with one paw. Brightheart sat beside her and bent her head forward to give the leaves an interested sniff. This is borage, Cinderpelt explained. You should start eating some now, so when your kits come, you'll have plenty of milk. Brightheart licked the herbs up, making a face as she swallowed them. They taste as bitter as mouse bile, but I don't mind, she added hastily. I want to do my best for my kits. You'll be fine, Cinderpelt assured her. Come back every morning for some more herbs, and call me right away if you think the kits are coming. I don't think it'll be long now. Thanks, Cinderpelt. Brightheart dipped her head to the medicine cat and padded across the clearing, passing Firestar at the end of the tunnel. Make sure you get plenty of rest, he meowed as she made her way back into the main camp. Cinderpelt dusted a few scraps of borage from her paws and limped into the clearing to meet Firestar. Once, she had been his apprentice. 
But an accident beside the Thunderpath had injured her leg and made it impossible for her to be a warrior. Firestar knew how hard it had been for her to give up the future she had always dreamed of. He still blamed himself for not taking better care of her. Cinderbelt, I have to talk to you, he began. Before the medicine cat could reply, a wail sounded from behind Firestar. Cinderpelt, look at my paw. Great Star Clan, what now? The medicine cat muttered. Sorrelpaw, the smallest of the apprentices, lurched into the clearing on three legs, holding out her forepaw. Look, Cinderpelt. The medicine cat bent her head to examine the paw. Firestar could see that a thorn was driven deep into the pad. Honestly, Sorrelpaw, Cinderpelt mewed. From the noise you were making, I thought a fox must have bitten your paw off. It's only a thorn. But it hurts, the apprentice protested her amber eyes wide. Cinderpelt tutted, lie down and hold your paw out. Firestar watched as the medicine cat expertly gripped the shank of the thorn in her teeth and tugged it out. A gush of blood followed it. It's bleeding, Sorrelpaw exclaimed. So it is, Cinderpelt agreed calmly. Give it a good lick. Every cat picks up thorns now and again, Firestar told the apprentice as her tongue rasped busily across her pad. You'll probably pick up a good many more before you're an elder. I know, Sorrelpaw sprang to her paws again. Thanks, Cinderpelt. It's fine now, so I'll go back to the others. We're training in the Sandy Hollow. Her eyes shone and she flexed her claws. Sandstorm's going to show me how to fight foxes. Without waiting for a response, she charged off down the fern tunnel. Cinderpelt's blue eyes gleamed. Sandstorm's got her paws full with that one. She commented. You've got your paws full yourself, meowed Firestar. Is it always this busy? Busy is good, Cinderpelt replied. Just as long as there's no blood being spilled. It's great being able to use my skills to care for my clan. Her eyes shone with enthusiasm, and once again Firestar was reminded of the apprentice she had been. What a warrior she would have made. But her accident had diverted all her energy like a clear, sparkling stream into the path of a medicine cat. Okay, Firestar, she prompted. You're busy too, so you haven't come here just to gossip. What can I do for you? Twitching her ears for Firestar to follow her, she made her way to the cleft in the rock and began to put away the remaining stems of borage. Firestar sat beside her, suddenly reluctant to tell any cat about the strange visions he had seen. I've been having these dreams, Cinderpelt shot him a swift glance. Usually only medicine cats received dreams from Star Clan, but she had learned long ago that their warrior ancestors came to Firestar too. It wasn't a dream from Star Clan, Firestar went on. At least, I don't think it was. He described the mist-shrouded moorland where the desperate wailing of cats had surrounded him. He couldn't bring himself to tell Cinderpelt about the pale gray cat he had seen in the ravine when he was awake, or the reflection in the puddle and the cat struggling in the river. They could be explained away too easily. Odd cloud formations, tricks of the light, or the pattern of starlight in the dark water. Cinderpelt finished tidying the herbs and came to sit beside him, her eyes thoughtful. You've had this dream twice? That's right. Then I think it's more than a tough bit of fresh kill stuck in your belly. She blinked several times and added, that many cats could only belong to a clan. And you're sure it wasn't Wind Clan? Positive. The moor wasn't anywhere in Wind Clan territory, I'm sure of it. And I didn't recognize any of the voices. Besides, there's been no report of trouble in Wind Clan. Cinderpelt nodded. And none in any of the other clans either. Do you think you're remembering the battle with Blood Clan? No, Cinderpelt. What I heard wasn't battle yowling. It was cats wailing as if something was terribly wrong. Firestar shuddered. I wanted to help them, but I didn't know what to do. Cinderpelt brushed her tail across his shoulder. I could give you some poppy seed, she suggested. At least that would give you a good night's sleep. Thanks, but no, it's not sleep I want. It's an explanation. Cinderpelt didn't look surprised. That's something I can't give you, not right now, she meowed. But I'll let you know if Star Clan show me anything. 
and be sure to come and tell me if you have any more dreams. Firestar wasn't certain he wanted to do that. Cinderpelt had enough to keep her busy without worrying about him. I'm probably making a fuss about nothing, he told her. I'm sure the dreams will go away if I stop thinking about them. He hadn't managed to convince himself, and as he padded away through the fern tunnel with the medicine cat's pale blue gaze following him, he was sure that he hadn't convinced Cinderpelt either. On the second night after his talk with Cinderpelt, Firestar had the dream again. He stood on the pathless moorland, straining to make out the blurred shapes that were all around him, yet never close enough to see clearly. What do you want? He called. What can I do to help you? But there was no reply. Firestar was beginning to feel as if he were doomed to stumble across this mist-shrouded moor forever, calling out to cats who could not or would not hear him. The sun had risen high above the trees when he woke the next morning. A warm wind ruffled his fur as he stepped out into the clearing. Sootpaw was hurrying across the clearing with a huge ball of fresh moss for the elders bedding. Fern Cloud and Brightheart were sunning themselves at the entrance to the nursery, watching Shrewkit and Spiderkit play fighting. Firestar stiffened at the sound of high-pitched caterwauling coming from outside the camp. Somewhere close by, a cat was in terrible distress. Had his dream followed him into the waking world? Or was he still asleep, trapped in the same dream? He forced his legs to carry him over to the gorse tunnel. But before he reached the entrance to the camp, Cloudtail and Brackenfur appeared, supporting Longtail, whose jaws were stretched wide, letting out loud wails of anguish. Cloudtail's apprentice, Rainpaw, followed them into the camp, his fur bristling with shock. Longtail's eyes were closed. Blood welled from beneath the swollen lids and spattered over his pale tabby fur. I can't see! I can't see! He wailed. What happened? Firestar demanded. We were out hunting. Brackenfur explained. Longtail caught a rabbit, and it turned on him and scratched his eyes. Don't worry, Cloudtail reassured Longtail. We'll get you to Cinderpelt right away. She'll fix you up. Firestar followed them as they guided Longtail across the clearing and through the tunnel of ferns. Cloudtail called for Cinderpelt, who appeared from the cleft in the rock and limped rapidly to Longtail's side. How did this happen? Brackenfur repeated what he had told Firestar, while Cinderpelt rested her tail gently on Longtail's shoulder. The tabby warrior's wailing had died away into shallow, rasping breaths. He was shivering violently. I can't see, he whispered. Cinderpelt, am I going to be blind? I can't tell until I've examined your eyes, Cinderpelt replied. Firestar knew she wouldn't try to comfort Longtail with a lie. Come over here and sit down in the ferns where I can get a proper look at you. She led him to a clump of bracken just outside the opening to her den. Longtail slumped onto his side, still panting hard. Rainpaw, bring me some moss soaked in water, Cinderpelt directed. As fast as you can. The apprentice glanced at his mentor, and when Cloudtail nodded, he sped off, leaving the ferns of the tunnel waving behind him. The rest of you can go, the medicine cat added and let Longtail have a bit of peace and quiet. Cloudtail and Brackenfur turned to leave. But Firestar padded over to Cinderpelt, who was calming Longtail with one paw stroking his flank. Is there anything I can do? He asked. Just go with the others and let me get on with it, Cinderpelt replied, her tart tones reminding Firestar of her mentor, Yellowfang. As Firestar turned away, she added, Oh, you might ask Cloudtail to let me have Rainpaw for the rest of the day. An apprentice to fetch and carry would be useful. Good idea, Firestar replied. I'll tell him. His heart was torn with pity for Longtail. The tabby warrior had challenged Firestar when he first arrived in the forest, and he had been far too close to Tigerstar. But when the murderous deputy's plans became clear, Longtail had realized where his true loyalties lay. And since then, he had become one of Firestar's most trusted warriors. When Firestar reached the clearing, he saw Cloudtail and Brackenfur standing with Brightheart, who was anxiously questioning them. Nosfer and Graystripe had come out of the warrior's den to find out what was going on. Firestar padded over to Cloudtail and passed on Cinderpelt's request about Rainpaw. Sure, the white warrior meowed. It's all good training for Rainpaw anyway. 
What's going to happen to Longtail? Brightheart fretted. Will he really go blind? Cinderpelt doesn't know yet, Firestar replied. Let's hope the damage isn't as bad as it looks. I was lucky, Brightheart murmured, half to herself. At least I've still got one eye. Glancing around at their troubled faces, Firestar tried to give them something else to think about. What about the hunting patrol? He asked Cloudtail and Brackenfur. You'd better carry on, and I'll come with you. Whatever happens, the clan still needs to be fed. I'll eat another, Graystripe offered. Mousefur, are you up for it? The wiry brown warrior nodded, lashing her tail. I'll fetch Dustpelt, she meowed. As she loped off toward the warrior's den, Firestar cast a final glance back at the fern tunnel. Everything was quiet now in Cinderpelt's clearing. Oh, Star Clan, he whispered. Don't let Longtail lose his sight. That night, Firestar was too restless to settle in his den. He was afraid the dream would return. He had come to dread the unknown moorland and the cries of distress from cats he had no power to help. As he paced the clearing, he heard a murmuring sound coming from Cinderpelt's den and brushed through the fern tunnel to find out what it was. Longtail lay in the ferns outside the split rock. His eyes were closed, but he looked too tense to be asleep. Sticky tears seeped from beneath his eyelids. Cinderpelt sat beside him, stroking his forehead lightly with the tip of her tail, murmuring to him words of comfort that a mother might use to soothe an injured kid. She glanced up as Firestar appeared. Shouldn't you be resting? he asked. Her blue eyes glinted in the moonlight. I could ask you the same thing. Firestar shrugged and went to sit beside her. I couldn't sleep. How's Longtail? I'm not sure. Cinderpelt dabbed up a pawful of chewed up herbs from a leaf beside her and patted them gently onto Longtail's eyes. Firestar recognized the sharp scent of marigold. The bleeding has stopped, thanks to her clan, the medicine cat went on. But his eyes are still very swollen. Firestar? Longtail raised his head, though he kept his eyes shut tight. What will happen to me if I go blind? If I can't be a warrior anymore? Don't worry about that, Firestar mewed firmly. Whatever happens, there'll always be a place for you in ThunderClan. Longtail let out a long sigh and lowered his head again. Firestar thought he had relaxed a little and hoped he would be able to sleep. Listen, Firestar, Cinderpelt dabbed some more of the marigold poultice onto Longtail's eyes as she spoke. As your medicine cat, I'm telling you to get some rest. More quietly, she added, your dream isn't going to go away. You know that as well as I do. You need to find out what it means. And the only way to do that is to dream it over and over until you figure it out. Firestar hesitated. He wasn't sure he agreed. Dreaming hadn't told him much so far. All right, he mewed reluctantly. But if Star Clan are trying to tell me something, I wish they would make it clearer. Obeying Cinderpelt, he padded back to his den. But this time he slept without dreaming at all. Early the next morning, he went back to the medicine cat's den, taking her a squirrel from the fresh kill pile. He found Cinderpelt still sitting beside Longtail, who was curled up asleep. Have you been here all night? Firestar asked, dropping the squirrel at Cinderpelt's side. Where else would I be? Longtail needs me. Don't worry, I'm not tired. She contradicted herself by stretching her jaws in an enormous yawn. Last night you told me to get some sleep, Firestar pointed out. Now, as your clan leader, I'm telling you. It won't do Longtail any good if our medicine cat gets ill. But I'm worried about him. Cinderpelt lowered her voice, even though Longtail was asleep. I think his eyes are infected. The rabbit's claws must have been dirty. Firestar peered at Longtail's closed eyes. He couldn't see much difference from the night before. They were still red and swollen, with sticky fluid and marigold pulp crusted around them. That's bad news, he mewed. All the same... I think you should eat that fresh kill and then get some rest. 
I'll send Rainpaw to you again, he added persuasively. He can keep an eye on things and call you if Longtail wakes up. Cinderpelt rose to her paws and arched her back in a long stretch. Okay, she agreed. But will you tell Rainpaw to fetch some more marigold first? There's plenty near the top of the ravine. Provided I see you eating that squirrel. Cinderpelt crouched down beside the squirrel, only to look up at Firestar again before she started to eat. I'm so scared that I won't be able to save Longtail's sight, she confessed. Firestar gently touched his nose to her ear. Every cat in the clan knows you're doing your best. Longtail knows it most of all. What if my best isn't good enough? It will be. ThunderClan couldn't have a better medicine cat. Cinderpelt sighed and shook her head before beginning to gulp down the squirrel. Firestar knew that he was wasting his breath trying to reassure her. If Longtail did go blind, Cinderpelt would blame herself, just as she had done when Graystripe's mate, Silverstream, died bearing their kits. Resting his tail briefly on the medicine cat's shoulder, he went to look for Rainpaw. Firestar led the way up the slope toward four trees. Rain had fallen earlier that day, and drops clung to his pelt as he brushed through the long grass. But now the clouds had vanished, and the full moon floated in a clear sky, surrounded by the glitter of silver pelt. The warriors Firestar had chosen to attend the gathering followed hard on his paws. Brambleclaw was bounding along at his shoulder, his eyes gleaming as if he could hardly stop himself from taking the lead and racing up the slope. Calm down, Graystripe meowed to him. It's not like this is your first gathering. No, but I was always an apprentice before, Brambleclaw pointed out. Graystripe, do you think Firestar will tell all the clans that I've been made a warrior? Firestar glanced over his shoulder. Yes, of course I will but they might not believe it unless you stop behaving like an apprentice, Graystripe warned, flicking Brambleclaw's ear with his tail. Firestar could already hear the sound of many cats ahead, and he picked out the scents of Wind Clan, River Clan, and Shadow Clan on the warm breeze. He quickened his pace. His dreams were still haunted by unfamiliar voices raised in misery, and it would be good to spend time among cats he knew well. He wanted to deal with problems he had met before, instead of struggling to find out what the strange cats wanted from him. But as he climbed the last slope to the edge of the hollow, he came to an abrupt stop. For a couple of heartbeats, he was convinced that cats were rushing toward him, many cats, a whole clanful. He blinked and saw nothing but shadows. But the scent he had tasted in his dreams flowed around him, stronger now. Behind his eyes, he had an impression of flattened ears and ruffled fur, as if the cats were fleeing from a gathering that had broken up in disorder. A moment later, the sensation vanished, and Firestar was aware of Dustpelt bumping into him from behind. For Star Clan's sake, the brown tabby warrior grumbled. Do you have to stop dead like that? Any cat would think you'd forgotten the way. Sorry, Firestar mewed. His paws still tingling, he took the last few paces that brought him to the top of the hollow. In front of him, the four great oaks rustled their branches, sending shifting patterns of light and shadow over the cats in the clearing. He paused for a few heartbeats longer than usual, searching for any other traces of the strange cats. But there was nothing to tell him who they were, and no trace of the pale warrior whose reflection he had seen in the puddle. Forcing himself to concentrate on the gathering, he raised his tail to signal to his clan and plunged into the bushes. When Firestar reached the clearing, Brambleclaw raced past him and stopped in front of a tortoiseshell she-cat, sitting a few tail lengths away. Tony Paw, he panted. Guess what? His sister stared back at him. Tony Paw, who's she? I'm Tony Pelt now, if you don't mind. Brambleclaw's tail curled up in delight. You are? That's great. So am I. I mean, I'm a warrior too. My name's Brambleclaw. Tawny Pelt purred and twined her tail with her brothers. Congratulations. Just beyond them, Graystripe was greeting his son and daughter, Stormfur and Feathertail, whose new warrior names had been announced by Leopardstar, the River Clan leader, at the previous gathering. 
Stormfur was a muscular gray tomcat, very like his father, while Feathertail had the beautiful light gray pelt of her mother, Silverstream. Sandstorm headed straight for Mistyfoot, the River Clan deputy who was sitting near the Great Rock. The two she cats had become friends when Mistyfoot had been driven out of her own clan by Tiger Star and had spent some time in Thunder Clan. Seeing that the rest of his warriors were also greeting friends from other clans, Firestar headed for the Great Rock, where Leopard Star, Black Star, and Tall Star were waiting. Tall Star stepped forward as Firestar sprang up to join them. Greetings, Firestar. Now that we're all here, the gathering can start. Firestar dipped his head to the other three leaders while Blackstar let out a yowl, signaling for the cats in the clearing below to be quiet. I will begin by speaking for Shadow Clan, he announced, narrowing his eyes at the other leaders as if they might challenge his right to make his report first. None of the other leaders tried to argue with him, though Tallstar shot a glance at Firestar and Leopardstar irritably twitched the tip of her tail. The prey is running well in Shadow Clan. Blackstar began, and we have made a new warrior, Tawny Pelt. A chorus of yowls broke out as the cats of all four clans congratulated Tawny Pelt and called out her name. Firestar glanced down to see the young tortoiseshell warrior sitting beside her brother, her eyes shining proudly. But he couldn't help noticing that a few of her own clanmates, the deputy, Russet Fur, for one, kept silent, giving Tawny Pelt suspicious stares. Firestar bit back a sigh. Some Shadow Clan cats clearly mistrusted her because she had been born in Thunder Clan. We have seen more two legs in our territory, Blackstar went on. They stride around yowling at one another, and sometimes they let their monsters leave the Thunderpath and crash through the woods. Leave the Thunderpath? Mistyfoot called out from below. Why? Are they chasing your cats, Blackstar? No. The Shadow Clan leader replied. I don't think they even know we're there. There'll be no trouble so long as we stay away from them. They must frighten the prey, though, Tallstar muttered to Firestar. I wouldn't want any more of them on my territory, that's for sure. Shadow Clan cats are better than most of us at hiding, Firestar pointed out under his breath. Blackstar stepped back, nudging Tallstar. Go on, it's your turn, he meowed. The Wind Clan leader dipped his head before advancing to the edge of the rock. All is well in Wind Clan, he reported. Ashfoot has a new litter of three kits. One whisker and mud claw chased off a fox, who seemed to think it would be happier living on the moors than in the woods. We soon changed its mind, mud claw, the Wind Clan deputy, yelled from where he sat at the base of the great rock. You'd better keep a lookout for it. Tallstar continued to Leopard Star. It crossed into your territory near the river. Thank you for that, Tallstar, the River Clan leader replied dryly. Another fox is just what we need. I'll warn the patrols. Firestar reminded himself to do the same. River Clan territory was narrow there, and if the fox had kept going, it could easily have crossed into Thunder Clan. Meanwhile, Leopard Star had stepped forward. As usual in Greenleaf, there are more two legs around, she meowed. They bring boats onto the river, and their kits play in the water and frighten the fish. This season the river is low, so there aren't quite as many two legs as usual. However, we have no problem feeding ourselves. Firestar wondered if that was completely true. If the water was low in the river, then surely there wouldn't be so many fish either. But it wasn't his place to argue. And he knew that Leopard Star, like all the leaders, wouldn't want her clan to seem weak from lack of food. Thunder Clan has a new warrior too, he announced when Leopard Star stepped back. Bramble Paw had his warrior ceremony and is now Bramble Claw. Another chorus of congratulations broke out while Bramble Claw sat beside his sister and acknowledged them with an embarrassed dip of his head. While he waited for the noise to die down, Firestar decided not to mention Longtail's accident. Before the next gathering, Cinderpelt would probably have healed the tabby warrior's eyes, and the whole incident would be forgotten. Our prey is plentiful, and the two legs aren't bothering us, he finished. It wasn't often that a gathering ended so quickly. With no serious disturbances to report from outside, and no reason for quarrels among the clans, 
As Black Star brought it to a close, Firestar looked down into the hollow. It was harder and harder to remember how it had looked after the battle with Blood Clan, when the grass was stained red and the bodies of forest cats and the invaders from Two Leg Place lay scattered across the clearing. He had lost his first life then, seeing a pale outline of himself take its place among the warriors of Star Clan. The Starry Cats had given him the courage to fight on when they told him there had always been four clans living in the forest, and there always would be. Life would go on like this forever. Firestar found the thought comforting. The daily routine of patrols, the toil of finding prey and training apprentices, even disturbing events like Longtail's injury and his own unexplained dreams seemed small and insignificant when placed beside the unending pattern of clan life. Firestar was part of a long, long line of cats, all driven by loyalty to their clan mates and the warrior code. Even when he had lost his last life, the great oaks would still be here, one for each clan, until his name had been long forgotten. Chapter 4 The gathering was over. Firestar bunched his muscles to leap down into the clearing. As he looked for a space to land, he froze, gripping the surface of the rock with his claws. The hollow suddenly seemed more crowded than usual. Sleek, starlit shapes were weaving among the forest cats, close enough for their pelts to brush. The forest cats passed them without a glance, calling out to their clanmates as they prepared to leave. The other three leaders leaped down into the midst of the strangers like water voles leaping into a pool. Leopard Star almost landed on top of a shimmering white warrior and bounded away without even a twitch of her whiskers. Firestar shivered. None of the others can see them. His gaze was drawn to one cat among the starry shapes, the gray and white cat he had seen twice before. He was staring directly at Firestar, his jaws open in a silent plea. But before Firestar could respond, Mudclaw of Windclam passed in front of him and the gray and white cat vanished. Firestar knew these were the same cats he had seen leaping in the river, the same cats that had appeared to him indistinctly through the mist in his dreams. Who are they? And what are they doing here? Hey, Firestar, Graystripe called from the foot of the great rock. Are you going to stay up there all night? Firestar gave himself a shake. He couldn't go on like this. These cats had stalked him through his dreams, and now they were haunting him in the waking world as well. He had to find out why, and if Cinderpelt couldn't help him, there might be other cats who could. He leaped down to where Graystripe was waiting for him with Sandstorm, Brambleclaw, and the rest of the ThunderClan warriors. Graystripe, I want you and Sandstorm to lead the clan back to camp. Why? Where are you going? Firestar took a deep breath. I need to go to the Moonstone. I have to share tongues with Star Clan. Graystripe looked surprised, but Sandstorm's green gaze met Firestar's with a look of understanding. I knew something's been troubling you, she mewed quietly, brushing her pelt against his. Maybe you'll feel better after you've spoken to our warrior ancestors. I hope so, Firestar responded. Shall I come with you? Graystripe offered. The rest of the clan don't need me to take them home, and you never know what might be lurking on the moors. What if that fox has come back? No, thanks, Graystripe, Firestar meowed. I'll go with Wind Clan as far as their camp, and after that I'll be fine. Okay. Graystripe gathered the rest of the Thunder Clan warriors together with a sweep of his tail. When you pass Barley's farm, say hi to Ravenpaw for me. I'll do that. Firestar turned to Sandstorm and touched his nose to hers. Goodbye. I'll be back soon. Good luck. Sandstorm blinked at him. I hope you find some answers. It feels like you're a long way away just now. Giving her ear a final lick, Firestar plunged into the bushes up to the top of the slope on the Wind Clan side of the hollow. Tallstar was already leading his cats onto the moor, small dark shapes outlined against a wash of moonlight. Firestar raced after them until he overtook the cat who brought up the rear. Hi, one whisker, he panted. Is it okay if I travel with you? I need to go to High Stones. Sure, no trouble, I hope. Nothing to worry about, Firestar replied, 
hoping that was true. He said goodbye to the wind clan cats on the slope above the hollow where they camped. Dawn was breaking as he set out for high stones, the pointed mass of rock dark against the pale sky. A chill wind ruffled the short springy grass, pressing Firestar's fur against his sides. Up here the sky seemed huge, without any trees for cover. The scents were unfamiliar too. A mixture of gorse, heather, and rabbits, with a sharp tang of peaty earth. A small, reed-fringed stream crossed Firestar's path. He leaped it easily, startling a rabbit that jumped up under his paws and fled down the slope, its white tail bobbing. Firestar's paws itched to chase it, but he wouldn't take prey on another clan's territory. Besides, a clan leader who traveled to High Stones to meet with Star Clan at the Moonstone wasn't allowed to eat on the journey. The sun had risen by the time the barren moorland gave way to lush meadows bounded by hedges and two-leg fences. A two-leg nest came into sight, and Firestar heard the distant barking of a dog. He looked around warily, tasting the air, but the dog scent was stale, and he reminded himself that by now the farm dogs, who were left to run loose at night, would be tied up again. He skirted the two-leg nest, slinking along in the shadow of a hedge. Another scent drifted toward him stronger and fresher than the scent of dog. Rats, Firestar paused, remembering how on his first journey to High Stones, Blue Star had lost a life in a battle with rats very near this place. Pinpointing the source of the scent, he realized that he was downwind of it. With any luck, he could pass without letting the rats know he was here. Not far away from the two-leg nest was a barn built of rough stone. Firestar headed for it and halted outside the door. A strong scent of cats flowed out of a gap at the bottom. Firestar felt a purr growing in his chest. Hi, he mewed. Can I come in? Firestar! A delighted meow came from inside the barn, and a black cat's head poked out of the gap. What are you doing here? Firestar slid through the door and stood among the dusty scraps of straw on the floor of the barn. He was greeted enthusiastically by Ravenpaw who had been a ThunderClan apprentice when Firestar first came to the forest. Ravenpaw had known too much about Tigerstar's crimes, and Firestar had brought him to the barn before the bloodthirsty deputy murdered him to keep him quiet. Ravenpaw had been scrawny and nervous back then. Now he was sleek and full-fed, his black pelt shining in the sunlight that angled through a hole in the barn roof. It's good to see you again, Firestar meowed. The last time he and Ravenpaw had met was at the battle with Blood Clan, when the black cat and his friend Barley had joined in the fight with the forest cats. Welcome, Ravenpaw touched noses with his former clanmate. Is all well in Thunder Clan? Fine, Firestar replied. But I. He broke off as another voice called out a greeting. Barley, the black and white cat who shared the barn with Ravenpaw appeared at the top of a pile of straw bales and dropped neatly down at Firestar's side. He was a short, compact cat, well-muscled, even though his belly was a bit too plump from all the mice that lived in the barn. Do you want to hunt? He offered. There's plenty of prey. Take as much as you like. I'm sorry, I can't, Firestar answered regretfully. Water flooded his jaws at the smell of mice. He could hear the tiny squeakings among the straw. I'm on my way to the Moonstone, so I'm not allowed to eat. That's tough, meowed Ravenpaw. But you can rest here, can't you? There's no point in going to High Stones yet. You'll arrive long before sunset. Thanks. I'm so tired I could sleep on my paws. Ravenpaw led the way to the opposite side of the barn, where he and Barley had made nests in a loose heap of hay. Barley left them to talk together, giving Firestar a friendly nod before sliding out of the barn. Firestar turned around two or three times, making himself a comfortable spot before curling up with the sweet-smelling stems tickling his nose. So, what brings you to the Moonstone? Ravenpaw asked and added hastily. You don't have to tell me, Firestar hesitated. So far, the only cat he'd confided in was Cinderpelt, and he hadn't told her everything. He suddenly realized what a relief it would be to share his worries with a cat who didn't look upon him as a leader, but as a friend. I've had strange dreams, he began, describing for Ravenpaw the stretch of unfamiliar moorland, 
and the shrill wailing of cats lost in the mist. And that's not all. I've started to see things when I'm awake, too. There's one cat, a pale gray warrior, that I've seen three times now. Not just him, a whole clan of cats, shining like starlight. I saw them last night at the gathering, but no other cat knew they were there. Sometimes I think I'm going mad. Ravenpaw's green eyes were filled with concern. Are you sure they're not from Star Clan? For a heartbeat, Firestar felt how strange it was to talk about Star Clan with a cat who didn't belong to a clan anymore. Don't think I've forgotten my warrior ancestors, Ravenpaw put in, as though he guessed what his friend was thinking. I may not go to gatherings anymore, but there's a part of me that will always be a clan cat. Firestar blinked, understanding. I'm sure the cats I've seen aren't any of the warrior ancestors I know. I don't recognize any of them or their scent. I don't know who or what they are or why I keep seeing them. That's what worries me. Ravenpaw flicked the white tip of his tail. Star Clan will probably be able to explain when you share tongues tonight. Why don't you sleep now, so you'll be ready? I think I will, Firestar murmured. Wake me at sun high, please. With a drowsy purr, he settled himself more comfortably in his nest of hay. Sunlight slanted through the dust-filled air, the moats dancing like tiny stars. His eyes closed, and he drifted into a warm, hay-scented sleep. Only a few heartbeats seemed to have passed before Firestar felt a paw prodding him in the side. He blinked his eyes open to see Ravenpaw standing over him. It's sun high the black cat meowed. Firestar rose and arched his back in a luxurious stretch. He couldn't remember the last time he had slept so soundly. In the ThunderClan camp, even if he didn't dream of the moorland, his sleep had been disturbed ever since he first saw the pale gray cat. He wondered if he had rested so well because he was away from the forest. Was it only there that the strange cats could reach him? He said a quick goodbye to Barley and Ravenpaw. The prey scent in the barn was more enticing than ever, reminding him of his empty belly. He wished he had taken the time to hunt and eat before he left Four Trees, but it was too late now. He left the barn and temptation behind him and set out for High Stones. By the time he reached the ridge, crossing the Thunderpath and scrambling up the rocky slopes, the sun was going down. The dark hole of Mothermouth gaped in the hillside. Firestar found a flat-topped stone and sat looking out across the two-leg fields and nests until darkness fell and the moon shed its silver light over the jagged rocks. He had walked down the lightless tunnel that led to the moonstone many times, but fear still gripped his belly as he stepped into the hungry shadows. Only his whiskers brushing the walls on each side and his paws on the rough, downward slope told him which way to go. Once he had left the opening behind him, the air was stale with a tang of dust and stone. Firestar shivered to think of the weight of rock above his head, pressing down on the fragile tunnel. At last came the moment when the air grew fresher again, bringing the scents of the moor to his nose. The tunnel opened out into a large cave, and he caught a glimpse of the stars glittering far above, shedding their faint light through a hole in the roof. He could just make out the dark shape of the moonstone in front of him, stretching three tail lengths high from the floor of the cave. Wrapping his tail around his paws, he sat down to wait. The change came with a blinding flash, as if every star and silver pelt had poured down into the cave at once. The moon shifted in the sky until it shone down through the hole in the roof. In its light, the moonstone glittered like dew shedding a pale, sparkling light on the cavern walls and the high arched roof. Firestar lay in front of the moonstone and stretched out until he could touch it with his nose. Cold spread through him from muzzle to tail tip, and he remembered the last time he had come here to receive his nine lives and his name. It seemed such a long time ago. He closed his eyes and let the darkness take him. For countless heartbeats, he felt nothing but wind and the scent of night rushing through his fur. Fear swelled up inside him. He gritted his teeth, refusing to lift his nose from the cold, cold stone. 
Then his ears picked up a faint sound that gradually grew louder, the rustling of leaves in the breeze. His eyes flew open. Huge branches stretched above his head, barely visible against a dark sky. There was no moon, but the stars of Silverpelt were burning brightly, close enough to look as if they were tangled among the leaves. Firestar scrambled up and looked around. He was back at Four Trees, but this time the clearing was empty. Then starlight sparkled at the edge of his sight, too low to come from Silverpelt. He spun around to see a blue-furred she-cat padding out of the shadows. Her pelt shone silver, and she left a frosty glitter on the grass where she set her paws. Blue Star! Firestar was overjoyed to see the ThunderClan leader before him. It's good to see you. Have you come here alone? Blue Star padded closer until Firestar could see the gleaming depths of her blue eyes. I know why you have come, she replied, and the questions you want to ask would not be welcomed by many of your warrior ancestors. Firestar stared at her. Do you mean that Star Clan know the cats in my dreams? Are they from Star Clan too? Why have I never seen them before, and what do they want from me? Blue Star brushed her tail across his mouth to silence him. Her eyes were troubled. Firestar felt as though he stood on the verge of a dark secret, and suddenly he didn't want to know what lay in its depths. Firestar, Blue Star's voice was uncertain, hesitant. Is there any way you would be content to go away without the answer you seek? There was a hint of desperation in her eyes. Firestar almost gave way to her, but then he remembered why he had come. If he left without an explanation, the terrified wailing would invade his dreams over and over again, and there would be no escape from visions of the fleeing cats. No, Blue Star, he answered steadily. I have to know the truth. Very well, Blue Star sighed. The cats you have seen are from Sky Clan. Sky Clan, Firestar echoed. What is that? Blue Star bowed her head. They are, they were, the fifth clan. Chapter five. But there have always been four clans in the forest. Not always, Blue Star replied. Her voice and her eyes were cold. Once there were five. Sky Clan's territory lay downriver from Thunder Clan, where the Two Leg Place is now. When the Two Legs built their nests many, many seasons ago, Sky Clan left the forest. There was no room for them then, and there's no room for them now. Where did they go? Firestar asked. I don't know. Far from these skies where Star Clan walks. And did Star Clan never try to find them? Firestar was shocked that Blue Star sounded so dismissive, as if the spirits of their warrior ancestors didn't care that a whole clan had gone away. Their own warrior ancestors went with them, Blue Star explained. There was no reason why Sky Clan couldn't have found another home somewhere else. Then what do they want with me? Firestar asked, bewildered. Are they trying to tell me that they want to come back? Why would they do that if they found another home? I don't know, Blue Star admitted. But from the first moment I saw you all those seasons ago, I knew you were the fire that would save our clan. I knew you would leave Paul Steps behind you that will be remembered as long as the warrior clans survive. Perhaps Sky Clan sees this also. Perhaps they think that only you can help them. Firestar shivered. Are you telling me that I have to find Sky Clan and bring them back to the forest? I'm not telling you anything of the kind, Blue Star snapped. Where is there room for another clan? But the dreams, Firestar protested. Firestar, are there bees in your brain? Blue Star's tail lashed. You are Thunder Clan's leader, and your clan needs you. There's nothing in the warrior code that says you have to help a clan that has been missing for so long no living cat remembers them. Firestar narrowed his eyes. Blue Star was right about his responsibility toward ThunderClan, 
but he couldn't forget the wailing of the cats on the moor. How could he ignore them if there was anything he could do to help? It wasn't Blue Star's dreams that were filled with the shrieks of terrified fleeing cats. She didn't see a pleading, haunted face in every pool of water. And yet the only reason he had found the courage to lead the forest clans into battle against Blood Clan was because he had believed his warrior ancestors when they told him there had always been four clans in the forest. The fifth clan was Star Clan, forever protecting the four below. Had Star Clan lied? Blue Star rested her tail tip on his shoulder and spoke more calmly. Your warrior ancestors are watching over you now just as they have always done. Nothing has changed. Your duty is to your own clan now. But Sky Clan has gone. There is no gap where they used to be, no prey or territory waiting for them to return. The forest is perfectly divided between the four clans who remain. Then it's the will of Star Clan that I just ignore these cats? Firestar challenged her. Don't you care that they are suffering? Blue Star blinked. There are cats who would argue that there should never have been a fifth clan in the forest at all. Why are there four oaks at four trees, if not to stand for the four clans? Firestar gazed up at the massive oak trees, then back at Blue Star. Fury, pure as a lightning flash, rushed through his body. Are you mouse-brained? He snarled. Are you telling me Sky Clan had to leave because there weren't enough trees? A look of shock and dismay filled Blue Star's eyes. Not waiting for her reply, Firestar whipped around and raced to the edge of the hollow. Brambles tore at his fur as he plunged through the bushes. But the pain meant nothing. Ever since he came to the forest, he had trusted his warrior ancestors, but they had been lying to him all along. He felt as if he had taken a step on ground he thought was solid, only to fall into deep and bitter water. He fought his way through the last of the bushes, but instead of reaching the rim of the hollow, he found himself blinking awake in the cavern of the moonstone. His breath was coming in harsh rasps. His fur felt torn and rumpled. His paws stung, and when he licked them, he tasted the salty tang of blood, as if he had been running a long way over stony ground. Far above, through the hole in the roof, clouds covered the moon and stars. The cave was utterly dark. Firestar rose to his paws and limped across the cave floor, close to panic until he stumbled into the entrance to the tunnel. When he emerged onto the side of the hill, a stiff breeze was shredding the clouds like wet cobweb. Firestar caught only fitful glimpses of the moon, but stars were shining overhead once more. He crawled onto the flat rock where he had waited earlier and collapsed there, gazing upward. He could not see the kindly eyes of his warrior ancestors in the starlight any longer. The desperate cries of the lost and tortured Sky Clan echoed through his mind. How am I meant to help them? All those cats must be dead by now. They had fled so long ago that no cat remembered them. But where were their descendants? the living Sky Clan. Firestar lay on the rock until the sky grew milk pale with dawn. Then he made his way, paw step by painful paw step, down the hill and into the fields, leaving the jagged peak of high stones behind him. A feeling of betrayal still swirled through him like a flooding river. He had always respected Star Clan, trusting them to want what was best for all the clans. Now he had discovered that they could make mistakes, just like any living cat. If he couldn't trust them, would he ever come here to share tongues with his warrior ancestors again? His belly felt hollow with hunger. Passing Ravenpaw's barn, he fought the temptation to go in to see his friends, to feast on their prey and rest in the soft heap of hay. But Ravenpaw was bound to ask him what Star Clan had said about the strange cats, and he could not think what he would answer. Ravenpaw still clung to his faith in Star Clan, even though he had left the forest. Could Firestar shatter that faith by revealing how their warrior ancestors had lied to all the cats in the forest over and over again? 
Once he had left the two-leg farm behind, Firestar stopped to hunt, swiping an unsuspecting mouse as it nibbled seeds in the shelter of a hedge. It scarcely took the edge off his hunger, but he was too exhausted to go looking for more. He curled up under a hawthorn bush and fell headlong into sleep. When he woke, it was almost sun high. Feeling better, Firestar set off again, skirting the edge of a field where the corn grew tall, beginning to turn golden in the sun. He spotted another mouse as it slipped between the stiff stems, pounced on it, and killed it with a swift bite to the neck. Gulping down the last few mouthfuls, he headed for the moors. The sun was going down when he limped at last into the Thunderclan camp. Red light bathed the clearing, barred with the shadows of trees. Firestar let out a long, despairing sigh. It was good to be home, but could he really go on as clan leader knowing what he knew now? As he hesitated at the mouth of the gorse tunnel, Graystripe came charging across from the warrior's den. Sandstorm glanced up from where she crouched beside the fresh kill pile and padded more slowly to join him. Firestar, you're back, Graystripe exclaimed. It's great to see you. Halting in front of his friend, he added more doubtfully, is everything okay? I'm fine, thanks, Firestar replied, every word and effort. I'm tired, that's all. Sandstorm brushed her tail sympathetically along his flank. Her green eyes searched his face, and he knew she realized that it was not only weariness that troubled him. But she didn't question him, just mewed, then it's time you got some rest. Listen, Firestar, Graystripe went on. The afternoon patrol just got back. They think that fox Tallstar was talking about has crossed over into Thunderclan territory. At least, they picked up strong, fresh fox scent on the border, not far from the two-leg bridge. Firestar squeezed his eyes shut, trying to concentrate on what this would mean for his clan. Did they follow the scent? They tried, but they lost it in a boggy bit of ground near the stream. Graystripe was looking expectantly at Firestar, waiting for his leader to tell him what to do. His expression changed to alarm as the silence lengthened. Firestar felt as if he were trying to struggle through brambles inside his head. He could understand the problem about the fox, but it felt as if it belonged to another cat a long time ago and had nothing to do with him. Firestar? Sandstorm murmured moving closer so that he could feel the warmth of her pelt. The excited squeals of Kits brought Firestar back to the present. In the center of the clearing, Shrewkit and Spiderkit were pouncing on a bundle of moss. Take that, Scourge! Spiderkit squealed. Get out of our forest! And take your clan with you! Shrewkit landed in the middle of the moss, paws flying, scattering the scraps in a wide circle around him. Hey! Rainpaw came bounding up from the direction of the elder's den. I just collected all that, he protested. How am I supposed to fix the elder's bedding if you keep messing it up? The two kits exchanged a glance, then scampered off side by side back to the nursery, their tails waving in the air. Rainpaw watched them go, neck fur bristling, then began to collect up the scattered scraps of moss. Watching the kits at play reminded Firestar that clan life was not just about Star Clan or even the Warrior Code. His duty as leader was to provide for his clan mates now and make sure they lived long and happy lives in the forest. Feeling a trickle of energy begin to flow into his tired limbs, he turned back to Graystripe. Right, the fox. Double the patrols on that part of the border and tell the hunting patrols to keep a lookout. We don't want it to settle here. Sure. Relief flooded into Graystripe's eyes as Firestar took control again. I'll make sure all tomorrow's patrols know about it. He headed toward the warrior's den. Sandstorm stayed with Firestar. You can tell me, you know. She meowed quietly. I know. I promise I will, but not yet. His mate nodded. Why don't you go to your den and rest? I'll bring you some fresh kill. Thanks, but I'd better visit Cinderpelt first. I want to check on Longtail. While Sandstorm went back to the fresh kill pile, Firestar padded across the darkening camp and brushed through the fern tunnel to Cinderpelt's den. 
the medicine cat was bent over Longtail, examining his eyes. As Firestar called out a greeting, the tabby warrior sat up and turned to him. Firestar stopped dead, his pelt prickling with horror. Though Longtail's eyes were open now, they were clouded and still weeping stickily. Can you see? Firestar forced himself to ask, choking back an exclamation of pity. That was the last thing Longtail would want. A bit, Longtail replied. But everything's blurred. His eyes are still infected, Cinderpelt explained. She looked exhausted. Her gray fur was rumpled and her blue eyes were dull with defeat. I've tried every herb and berry I can think of and nothing will clear it up. Longtail clawed at the bracken where he sat, his head lowered. I'm just going to be a burden to the clan, he growled. No, Firestar exclaimed. I won't let you say that. Look at Brightheart. She's learned to fight with only one eye. At least she has one good eye, Longtail hissed. You might as well leave me in the forest for the foxes. That will never happen, not while I'm leader of this clan, Firestar hissed back. Fury shook him, not against Longtail, but against himself for not having enough power to protect his warrior from the consequences of his injury. Trying to sound calmer, he added, besides, you haven't lost your sight yet. Cinderpelt will do her best to find an herb that works. I'll keep trying, Cinderpelt vowed. Beckoning Firestar with her tail, she led him over to the fern tunnel. You'd better leave Longtail alone for now, she advised quietly. He's badly shocked, and he needs a while to get used to the idea that his eyes might not get better. Firestar nodded. Okay. Raising his voice, he added, don't worry about a thing, Longtail. You'll always have a place in ThunderClan. I'll come and see you again soon. Returning through the tunnel to the twilight clearing, Firestar still felt choked by pity. And fury, too, that this should happen to one of his warriors. He remembered the life that Brindleface had given him when he became clan leader. A life for protection, the care of a mother for her kits. He had expected that life to be warm and gentle, but instead it had entered him with the shock of fire and ice together. He had felt the raw, ravenous urge to fight and kill, to spill rivers of blood to protect young, helpless cats. Now, thinking of Longtail as he struggled to cope with losing his sight, Firestar understood more clearly what that instinct meant. As clan leader, he would rip out all his claws to protect any one of his clanmates. His den under the high rock was cool and quiet. Sandstorm had left a rabbit for him, and Firestar settled down to eat. Now that he was alone, he felt as limp as a drooping leaf. Yet he was beginning to see a way forward, a way to care for his clan, even though his trust in Star Clan had been shattered. He was curling up comfortably when a shadow fell across the den entrance. He looked up to see Cinderpelt, her head and shoulders thrusting back the screen of lichen. Longtail's asleep now, she explained. So I thought I'd take the chance to come and ask what happened at the Moonstone. Did you find the answers you were seeking? Yes, but they weren't the answers that I wanted to hear. He felt it was still too soon to tell what had happened, even to his medicine cat. To his relief, Cinderpelt didn't press him. Coming into his den, she bent her head to give his ear a comforting lick. Have faith, she urged him. Star Clan are watching over us, and everything will be all right. A claw of anger pierced Firestar. He longed to tell her that Star Clan had lied to them, that their ancestors had allowed a clan to leave the forest in spite of everything in the warrior code. But he could not bring himself to poison Cinderpelt's faith, to spill bile onto everything she believed. Somehow he knew that this was his problem and his alone. Without the help of Star Clan, without any remnant of faith in his warrior ancestors, he must find a way of dealing with it. Chapter Six Wind swept across the moorland, shredding the mist, and Firestar saw the fleeing cats clearly for the first time. 
They were following a river. The familiar tang of water in the air told him this was the forest river he knew, though here, beyond Wind Clan territory, it flowed more swiftly through the hills. Wait, Firestar called to them. Cats of Sky Clan, wait for me. I've come to help you. He raced across the springy turf, but the Sky Clan cats sped away from him as if they had not heard his cries. Suddenly, a kit tumbled into the river its mother letting out a yowl of dismay as the current swept it away. Then a young apprentice, straying away from the main group, was picked off by a fox. Firestar heard its squeals of terror cut off abruptly as the fox bounded away, outpacing a couple of warriors who tried to chase it. An elder lagged farther and farther behind. She kept limping after her clan, though her paws left smears of blood on the grass. Another staggered to a halt then fell on one side and didn't get up again. At the head of the journeying clan, Firestar spotted the gray and white cat. Thin, hungry-looking warriors clustered around him. Even though Firestar still couldn't catch up to them, their voices came clearly to him. Where are we going? One of them meowed. We can't live here. There's no prey and nowhere to camp. I don't know where we're going, the gray and white cat replied. We just have to keep on until we find somewhere. But how long? One of the other warriors asked. No cat replied. Firestar saw a small, light brown tabby she-cat shouldering her way through the warriors until she reached the gray and white cat. Let me speak to Star Clan, she begged. They might know of a place for us. The cat rounded on her. No, Fawnstep, he spat. Our warrior ancestors have failed us. As far as we're concerned, Star Clan no longer exists. He must be the clan leader. There was authority in his voice, and the small tabby, Sky Clan's medicine cat, Firestar guessed, bowed her head and didn't try to argue. Firestar called out to the Sky Clan cats again and made one last effort to catch up to them, but he was falling farther and farther behind. Mist swirled around him again, cutting him off from the fleeing clan. At last, his paws wouldn't carry him any longer. He sank down and opened his eyes to find himself in his own den. Gradually, he became aware of another cat sitting in the shadows. Sandstorm, he murmured, longing for the warmth and comfort of his mate's presence. The cat turned toward him, and the light from the den entrance fell onto a soft tortoise shell pelt. Spotted leaf! The former ThunderClan medicine cat rose and came toward him, gently touching her nose to his. Firestar drank in her familiar sweet scent. He couldn't think of her as one of the warrior ancestors who had betrayed him. No matter what the rest of Star Clan might do, he would always trust Spotted Leaf. Gazing at the shape of her head and her slender, graceful body, he found himself thinking of the gray and white cat the Sky Clan leader he had seen in his dreams. Have you come to tell me about Sky Clan? He asked. Yes, Spotted Leaf replied gravely. When I lived in Thunder Clan, I never knew there had once been five clans living in the forest. I learned their story after I joined Star Clan. I don't understand. Firestar scratched restlessly at a piece of moss. How could Star Clan allow a whole clan to leave the forest? Spotted Leaf crouched beside him. He could feel the vibrations of her soothing purr. I know it is hard for you, she mewed. But Star Clan do not control everything in the forest. We could not banish the dog pack that threatened you, or drive out Scourge and Blood Clan. Firestar sighed. He knew that was true but it didn't explain why Star Clan had lied and pretended that Sky Clan had never existed. Have you met any of the Sky Clan cats? Spotted Leaf shook her head. We do not walk the same skies. I spoke to Blue Star, Firestar meowed. She told me my duty is to Thunder Clan. She said there is nothing I can do for Sky Clan. But if that's true, why do I keep seeing them? If the Sky Clan leader has appeared to you in dreams, Spotted Leaf replied, touching his shoulder with her tail, then he must believe you can help him. 
But how? Firestar persisted. What can I do? It all happened so long ago. The answer will be shown to you, Spotted Leaf promised. Rest now. She pressed closer to his side, and Firestar drifted more deeply into sleep, comforted by her warm scent. This time, no dreams disturbed him. Bright sunlight shone into his den when Firestar woke. Spotted Leaf was gone, though he caught a trace of her scent among his bedding. He rose and stretched, feeling new energy coursing through him. Skirting the high rock, he found Graystripe in the main clearing with several cats standing around him as he arranged hunting patrols. Cloudtail, you can go with Thornclaw, he was telling the white warrior. Who do you want for a third? Willowpelt? I'll go, Firestar interrupted, bounding up to them. I feel as if I haven't had a good hunt for moons. Thanks, Graystripe nodded to him. In that case, Willowpelt, you can come with Brackenfer and me. We'll head toward four trees and see if we can spot that fox. Once outside the camp, Firestar let Thornclaw take the lead. The tabby warrior took them down a trail that led to Two Leg Place. Everything was quiet, even the prey seemed to be hiding. Firestar paused, gazing through the trees at the fence that edged the two leg nests, and wondered where Sky Clan's territory had been. The border must have been near here if they had been driven out when the two legs built their nests. When they built his old two-leg nest, Firestar realized with a jolt. His paws prickled at the thought that he might have once lived in part of Sky Clan's old territory. Cloudtail and Thornclaw had vanished among the trees to search for prey. Firestar dragged his thoughts away from Sky Clan. He had a clan to feed. He opened his jaws. A strong scent of mouse flowed over his scent glands, and he spotted the creature scrabbling at the edge of a bramble thicket. Dropping into the hunter's crouch, he prowled forward, setting each paw down as lightly as a falling leaf. But before he came within pouncing distance, a white blur appeared at the corner of his eye. He whipped his head around, furious with Cloudtail for creeping up on him. Go and catch your own prey! But the white blur had vanished and a wisp of now familiar scent told him that it hadn't been Cloudtail after all. The Sky Clan leader had crossed his path once more. Firestar stood still, his tail flicking back and forth. Are you there? He called softly. What do you want? Come and talk to me. There was no reply. By now the mouse had vanished. Firestar opened his mouth and breathed in, trying to track down more prey. His ears strained to pick up the least sound of tiny paws. Instead, all he could hear was a furious yowling and scuffling that broke out somewhere ahead near the two-leg fence. Was something, maybe a two-leg dog, attacking his warriors? He raced through the trees until he came to the edge of the wood. Ashfur and Brambleclaw were scuffling with an unfamiliar black and white cat. Brambleclaw had climbed onto the cat's back, clawing at its neck fur, while Ashfur bit down hard on the end of its tail. The black and white cat was writhing on the ground, his flailing paws barely touching his attackers. Get off me, he yowled. I need to see Rusty, I mean Firestar. Firestar suddenly recognized the disheveled bundle of black and white fur. It was Smudge the kitty pet who had been his friend before Firestar left his two legs to live in the forest. Stop! He ran over to the wrestling cat, lowering his head to butt Brambleclaw hard in his flank. Brambleclaw slid off Smudge's back, glaring up with a furious hiss that broke off when he realized who had interrupted the fight. Leave him alone, Firestar ordered. But he's an intruder, Brambleclaw protested, scrambling to his paws and shaking dust from his pelt. A kitty pet intruder, added Ashfur, reluctantly letting go of Smudge's tail. No, he's not, Firestar corrected them. He's a friend. What are you two doing here anyway? We're the border patrol, Brambleclaw told him. With Dustbelt and Mousefur. Look, here they come. Following the direction of his pointing tail, Firestar spotted the two older warriors bounding rapidly through the trees. In Star Clan's name, what's going on? 
Dustpelt demanded. I thought a fox must have gotten you from all that noise. No, just a kitty pet, Firestar mewed, faintly amused at Brambleclaw's and Ashfur's outraged expressions. Okay, carry on with your patrol, he added. But what about the kitty pet? Ashfur asked. I think I can handle him, Firestar mewed. You're doing fine, but just remember that not everything you haven't seen before is a threat. Brambleclaw and Ashfur fell in behind Dustpelt and Mousefur as they continued their patrol. Brambleclaw cast a threatening glance back at Smudge and hissed, Stay off our territory in the future. Smudge heaved himself to his paws, glaring at his attackers. His fur was covered in dust and stuck out in all directions, but he didn't seem to be hurt. You're lucky I was here to save your pelt, Firestar remarked as the patrol vanished among the trees. His old friend let out a furious snort. I'll never understand you, Firestar. You actually want to live with these violent ruffians? Firestar hid his amusement. There was no point trying to explain that these violent ruffians were warriors who had risked their lives at his side time and time again. It's good to see you again, Smudge, he meowed. Why did you come so far into the forest? You know it's dangerous for you. Smudge looked away, scuffling the ground with his forepaws. Well, Firestar prompted when Smudge had been silent for several heartbeats. The kitty pet blinked. I, I think, he began haltingly. That is, I'm afraid I might have to come and live in the forest with you. Great Star Clan, what's happened? It's not Blood Clan, is it? Firestar asked fearfully. Smudge looked up for a moment. Who? Never mind. Your two legs, then. They haven't thrown you out, have they? No. My housefolk have always been very good to me. Smudge cast a longing look over his shoulder toward the red stone nest where he lived. It's just, well, I've been having these weird dreams. And I remember you told me that you had dreams before you went to join the forest cats. Horror gleamed in his eyes, and Firestar, for all his sympathy, found himself hiding a purr of amusement that his old friend couldn't imagine anything worse than having to live in a clan. I thought my dreams must mean I'd have to leave my housefolk. Firestar swept his tail around to touch his old friend on the shoulder. I wouldn't worry. Dreams have many meanings, and sometimes a dream is just a dream. I'm sure you won't have to eat bones just yet. Smudge didn't look reassured. But these dreams are terrible, he mewed. I keep seeing lots of cats. They're running away, but I never get to see what's chasing them. They're wailing and shrieking as if they're scared or in pain. And sometimes I see a gray and white cat on his own. He keeps opening and closing his mouth as if he's trying to tell me something, but I can't hear what he's saying. Every hair on Firestar's pelt bristled. Smudge was having the same dreams as him. But why? Surely Sky Clan didn't think that a kitty pet could help them. What do you think? Smudge asked nervously. Do I have to come and live in the forest? Firestar knew he had to decide how much to tell his friend. Though his faith in Star Clan had been badly shaken, he still felt some loyalty toward them. At least, he didn't think he could tell Smudge how Star Clan had allowed Sky Clan to be driven from the forest and then lied about it afterward. Besides, if he tried to explain, how much would Smudge understand? He had no idea about the warrior code or what it was like to live in a clan. Don't worry about it, he meowed at last. There's no reason for you to leave your two legs. Are you sure? Positive. I know a bit about these dreams already, and I'm trying to sort everything out. Smudge looked puzzled, but relieved as well. I guess I'll let you handle it then. Firestar was glad he didn't think to ask how a forest cat, even a clan leader, could know about another cat's dreams. I'll come back with you to your two-leg nest, he mewed just in case any of those violent ruffians are still hanging about. Smudge looked down at his messy fur and gave it a few swift licks. Then he and Firestar padded side by side through the trees. 
As the two-leg fence came into sight, Firestar spotted a vole pattering through the long grass. He made a swift pounce and straightened up with the limp body hanging from his jaws. He tried to push down a stirring of pride that he had been able to show off his hunting skills in front of Smudge. His friend's eyes were wide, but not with admiration. Don't you ever get tired of having to catch your own food? Firestar dropped his fresh kill and scraped leaves over it so that he could collect it later. No, never. That's what warriors do. Smudge shrugged and went on toward his nest. Catching up with him, Firestar spotted another cat, a pretty brown tabby jumping down from the fence around the two-leg nest where he had once lived. He remembered seeing her before when he had been showing the territory to his new apprentice, Bramblepaw. Hi, she meowed. Her amber eyes examined Firestar without a trace of fear. Who's this, Smudge? I've never seen him before. Smudge twitched one ear. His name's Firestar. He lives in the forest. I'm called Hattie, the tabby introduced herself. I've never met a forest cat before. How do you know Smudge? I've known him since I was a kit, Firestar explained. I used to live here, in this two-leg nest. Really? But this is my home now, the tabby's eyes stretched wide. Why did you leave? It's a long story. Firestar didn't expect any kitty pet, even this lively tabby, to understand what had called him out of his safe life with two legs to the danger and excitement of the forest. I've got time to listen, Hattie meowed. Firestar was aware of Smudge close beside him, quivering with tension. Sorry, he meowed. Maybe another time. Hattie looked disappointed. Don't you want to see where you used to live? She mewed persuasively. My two legs dug up a bush that was so old, its roots stretched nearly the whole way across the garden and planted some new trees that are great for scratching. Firestar opened his jaws to refuse, but the words didn't come. He stood silent, gazing at the fence. An old bush. How old? Suppose it had been here before the two leg nests were built. Did that mean it had been here when Sky Clan lived in the forest? Were there any other remnants of Sky Clan's former territory that might have survived?